I guess as you go, what makes you go to Charlotte then? Okay, you said you moved out because Charlotte is cheaper. Yeah, it was kind of like one of those, you know, decision you make with your wife to to try to better your kids' environment. Like my daughter, we wanted better better opportunities for her. There was a lot of art schools down here and stuff. And, you know, we put our daughter in, in art school and, you know, came down here. And it definitely got rid of my ego. I, you know, I was growing up as a young dude in New York. I had a lot of ego and, you know, I was ego tripping, you know, and I got to Charlotte and it humbled me out. So I was able to to create much better much better when I got down here because I got rid of all my distractions. You know what I'm saying? So I got to focus I'm actually going to go me. say, I kind of don't 100% know what you mean because that could be a lot of things. So you come, the part I do get is the New York part. Like, don't get me wrong. I went from almost nobody from New York City into my life to talking to New Yorkers like every week. I get the yeah, New York thing. You know what I mean? A lot. My bad. And it's not just that. Um, all of it, too. It's like the conciseness. It's this like idea that, like, bro, the New York experience is the experience. And I'm like. No, no, I'm no, not. I'm definitely not like that. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm I'm not, totally it's not even like you are in a sense. Actually, you're, like, way more aware of the New York thing than other people might be. But I've had people be yeah. like, nah, I mean. And then, like, we have to be like, no, actually nothing you said makes sense to me at this you. moment all right i might go too fast just let me know if i'm going too fast nah you're wonderful <laughs> this is fun this is this is the show this is how it all works with everybody it just kind of goes it flows and you know weaves in and out and stuff but uh you said it humbled you out and you came down with that new york energy what exactly is it because like it doesn't work there like the people in charlotte be like Pfft. i don't know like how, how did it humble you out I had to literally almost restart when I came to Charlotte because I had a name in New York and the underground scene and all that. But I came down here and I had to completely restart. And that was hard, man. Like I had to like restart from scratch and build a whole other way to, to move around here in music. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so I, I met up with a guitar player and we started writing tunes and we got got real focused with it. And then we got a band together and had a band and the whole nine and you know, I'm, you know, it, it was on, man. You know what I'm saying? So that, but I was still doing, you know, the New York thing because I would just still go back up to New York. And, and then I created MHB with my boys and that had Lifelong in it, Masai Bay. So I was doing both at the same time. Like it was two different worlds. Okay. You know? And so given that you're now playing in two separate genres and two separate indie scenes, that's an experience yep. arguably not a lot of people have what advice do you have to indie people because like now you know stuff that transcends the hip-hop scene because you know we all let me let me add a little more context to this my main benefit from doing these shows is because i get to learn from the stuff other people do and one of the big lessons i learned is that the montreal problem is the indie scene problem and every city has this problem including new york so there's always the indie scene problem in every city and it just creates this piss poor attitude of like you know the indie scene problem. Everyone whines about that shit. Um, so now that you're in multiple yeah. genres and shit, I guess you can see pitfalls and parallels and differences. Is there like, what oh, would you yes. say is like some real distinctions between hip hop and like the rock world or like, what can we all learn from that? Like what they're doing differently? Well, I got one right off the top just so I don't have to think about it too hard. Is that working with a band, the metronome was the most important, man. They Guitar players would get pissed off. Like if you saying in any way because like hip-hop would be more free for me so what with with a band if i if i whatever i wrote or whatever i sang was even just off just by like a just by a smidget it would destroy the whole rhythm the the, the lead guitar the lead bass like everything would kind of tumble down so it was very important to 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 to, to follow along with that metronome and if, if an artist can't do that that's one advice i would say you better get used to hearing that tick tock because if you can't hear that in the music, you're you're lost. You're gonna get lost in it. Oh, say a word. And you're not necessarily yeah, saying you're lost in like do you guys actually so when you practice, is there like an actual metronome in the room or is it no, more, you just no, have to you, follow off the drummer proper proper? Yeah. When when we were being in the studio sometimes we would have to have to keep a metronome on with some points. Not for just me, but for other for other musicians or whatever. They you would hear just the slug tick. You know what I'm saying? Know, I've been a stubborn fuck about metronomes. My engineer has been like use a metronome and I'm like, I'm not using a metronome. So I never did. <laughs> and I painstakingly learned about flow and pockets. Um, 
but mm-hmm. would you recommend using a metronome if you'd be rapping and stuff? I say if the if the MC has a struggle with staying on beat, I would definitely say practice it like that, but not I think it would be too much of a distraction because there's a certain hint of you just got to be totally connected with the beat when it comes to hip hop, at least for me. There has to be that spiritual connection, you know what I'm saying? And if there's a metronome in the way, it can mess it up a little bit. I, I would I would say, you know, maybe when I'm making a beat, I like to use a metronome. Mm, that's an interesting way to look at it. Um, I try to find my metronome in every beat. Like you should, yeah, well, you should, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Absolutely. Uh, but I usually ride bass lines. For me, it's all about a bass line. I don't really care about drums okay. as much. That's why drum okay. lists confused the shit out of me. I didn't realize rappers were riding drums this whole time. I've been riding the bass the entire career that I've had. So, like, that's a nifty point uh, with the mention. Anyway, I got a little sidetracked there. So you're, you come down there, and now you're doing the band, and you're popping back up to New York, and you're performing in both scenes. Do you find that the crowds are different? Oh, hell yeah. Way different. Way different. But at the same time, they're both going for the same thing. Like if you're at a real hip hop crowd or you're with a real, I'd say people that dig like a Red Hot Chili vibe, you know what I'm saying? They, they're both they're both looking for the same to point in the music, you know what I'm saying? So that there's that love, that, that but it's definitely a different vibe, you know what I'm saying? But you still get the, the audiences that you got to perform in front of in either genre that that use the music as a, as an ambient noise, which pisses me off. It's like, why are you going to watch a band or go and watch performers and you you talk through the whole show, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you'd have to do, those are the extremes of the show. Man. And a lot more in rock music. Like, if just because you're up there singing and playing music, like you're, you're like just their ambient sound, you know? And you have to rehearse for weeks to get to that point, you know? <laughs> I got one answer for you that maybe isn't going to be your favorite, but... I'm probably bringing a girl to that rock show. I'm probably not bringing a girl to the hip hop show. <clears throat> and that's going to change my intentions for the whole night. I'm just being real. Right. Yeah. It depends on which one you go to. Like you can definitely a Roots show or you go to a Karis one show or you, there's definitely differences in the different uh, audiences. I was like, I feel on- that Roots thing actually. Karis one. That's a tough sell. That girl got to really like hip hop, I think. But they roots, the ones I went to. <laughs> roots, maybe like yo, just blind, yeah. like yo, I could see that they'd be on like Jimmy whatever show, and they'd be like mad <laughs> knowing how to do their shit. <clears throat> I fucks with Roots heavy. Right. Actually, we did an album review for their first album, and it was like a wild, the whole like improv jazz experience thing. I'm like, yeah, no, that works. Yeah. But, yeah so that to me is what I call like bring a date music. Just bring a date, and it works. <laughs> it's, it's a vibe. Um, so, so you're down there, uh, and I guess do you get paid to perform? Um, we had some paid shows, or you get like the gigs that where people would give you like a bar tab. You know what I'm saying? Bar tabs and stuff like that, and you know, so that's basically as, as far as I got. I, I got to be on the bill a few times in New York, like when I we uh, did the show with um, Jedi Mind Tricks. And Seven L and Esoteric, we got to be like on the big posters and stuff like that. And That's pretty fire. Free beer at the bar, you know. But that was beautiful. I, I mean, it was really nice working with Jedi Mind Tricks. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, they were great, great performers. And at the time, it was, you know, it was a beautiful thing. Do you get to like have a cool backstage view of it, or are you like in the crowd? No, I was on the, the stage, a little too rowdy at points, and <laughs> probably. <laughs> So, so you're on stage with Jedi Mind Tricks as they do. Well, they were we were the opening act for Jedi Mind Tricks at that that show. You know what I'm saying? So we were all in the same room, the same doing the same thing. You know, and you know, we were the, my group, the Fifth Element, the, the group I was in. You know, we were the ones, one of the headliners too. But the, they were the main act at that time, Jedi Mind Tricks, definitely. Yeah, that's pretty wild. So. Yeah, like uh, like just the yeah, it's like like indie underground powerhouse shit going on right there. And yeah, when was yeah. that? That was like to the two thousands and and that era. The when uh, we did the uh, when we did the uh, that that show the the one with Jedi Mind Tricks. I think that was like uh, two thousand four, two thousand yeah, two thousand four. Okay, so that was like early on for you. Yep. No, that's pretty fire. <laughs> um. Apparently, what Willie and the crowd saw 7L and Esoteric get booed off stage in Toronto at Canadian Music Week. 
Does Canada be? Yeah, I've heard about those moments with them. Yeah, I've heard about those moments with them. You know. Um, I just know they're good. I don't. Aren't they the ones in Sarface? Or am I wrong about that? I could be wrong. I'm not too sure, but I no. know. Yeah, that at the time that they were one of the acts of the, the. I don't know too much about them. They were from actually the same county as mm. I lived in as well. Seven L in the same county as me and Cage and all of us. Yeah, you guys really did produce a whole lot of people. That's fucking wild. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not me. Like, so I'm from Montreal. Like, yeah, we got people in EDM. And trust, if we were talking to EDM, Montreal's dominating apparently, which I didn't know until recently. Aside of that, we got hockey players. That's true. But, like, you ain't really hearing about a bunch of Montreal rappers in New York making all kinds of waves and shit. You got Drake for, like, the whole country. <laughs> And the weekend, yeah, and like maybe Tory Lanez, unfortunately, because yeah, know, his branding's not great right now. So like that's the whole right. country, and like maybe Mad Child and Tom McDonald, which are not my favorite representations of my country right yeah. now. Um, mm-hmm. who else? I don't know, but that's like the whole country, let alone my city. So like just the idea of like you know sometimes when you hear people like yo my county be popping off celebrities like my and even whatever tier celebrities celebrities to me it's like wow shit it's cool like you just you just want your home to be that place in whatever you're in you know yeah um so yeah so apparently esoteric and seven l are in surface with inspected deck i was like i'm pretty sure i knew them from that that's a fucking okay. powerhouse group if you're into that like you know they did a project with doom they did a project with ghostface like they're like one of those groups it's really yeah. like yep. consistent if you love it, yeah. you're gonna love Absolutely. it. Absolutely. If you don't yep. love it, you're not gonna love it. And I couldn't convince yeah, you. Yeah. If you don't love it, don't me. listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like, um, once you get to Charlotte, you're doing that. I guess. Um, are you still in Charlotte? Is that where you're at now? Yeah. So yep. like, have you been have you been like running both groups for like the last decade? No, MHB, we didn't really like split apart, but you know, people had other priorities and things. To, things kind of switched up and then around 2013 or 2012 i got with main kind co-pro with uh uh you know uh the black dj black panther and uh respect the god and caligula you know um falling down from the law um from uh, killer army he was one of the producers of killer army i was you know i did a few albums with uh falling down and i got with uh main kind co-pro at the time that's dope. And so, like, what's it like? As time goes on, do you find like what? It, what do you find that changes for you, like in terms of recording and like your style? Do you feel like there's an evolution and all that with the different people you work with? Yeah, I mean, if I if I stop if I stop getting better at what I do, then I I, I might as well just stop. I don't I don't if I get to a point of plateauing, then I'm gonna try something else musically. Maybe I'll try to learn a guitar or, or whatever else. But it's important to always elevate and grow and learn more ideas and, and different styles and, and always push myself to the point where you know i know i could write better than that or i know i could do better than that the next time or right like i don't do punch-ins in the studio either like i go if i have to do 25 takes i'll do it until that verse is going to be absolutely fire or it's just not worth it for me you know what i'm saying mm, my my every producer i talk to does not agree with you <laughs> <laughs> i know i know a lot of producers they'd be like yo just punch in you know, and as a producer myself, I'd rather the artist go all the way through because then it's easier to engineer it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. At the end of the day. Um, I don't think my producer, for, so here's their perception. <laughs> I'm going to tell you their perception. <laughs> I don't want to listen to you do this verse 25 times. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm kind of like, because here's what happened. COVID kicked in for me, and one of the things that came is like, yo, where am I going to record? I mean, already I was recording from home. Oh, well, you're paying studio time. That's different too, right? Yeah. But then all of a sudden, yo, shout out Spectres81. Um, then all of a sudden, it's like people be coming through my crib, and I'm recording people here because ain't nobody got somewhere to go. So if they're going to work with me, they're coming. Bro, recording somebody that like, it's not, it's not the same when it's not you. That's the one thing I can right. say, right? It's just not the same when it's not. I, I, oh, mean, I know. I've been there. Miserable shit. I mean, I love it. I c- kind of grew to love it. It's kind of, it's right. like you learn to love the beauty of the process, especially if you were like, yeah. I'm going to never be an engineer of any capacity yep. in my whole life. And then I'll, you know. 
And, and what I tell a lot of artists that I work with, if I have to mentor them or whatever, I tell them that they have to rehearse before they end up in, a, in any studio, even if it's mine. They have to rehearse that, that track, practice it, because I'd rather them not even read from a book, because then we won't have to worry about a bunch of punch-ins and takes. And mm. I'm very, you know, it's, it's important to rehearse. Like, I have to rehearse, you know, rehearse, rehearse it. But when it comes to my own music, I don't rehearse it at all. I ended up doing 10, 15 takes. <laughs> Very hypocritical on that level. <laughs> it's the classic situation, right? It's so much easier to tell yeah. other people to be doing some good advice things yep. than go ahead See, and be I'll doing it. <laughs> it's just how it's just how it is. I mean, I'd be wildly not okay. Like I can give you the best social media marketing advice in the world and then still fuck up on my own account. Cause like right. once it's my own account, it's like oh, fuck, I don't want to fucking TikTok. <laughs> you know, like, I'm, I'm not any different. I just know how to do it. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> um, uh, shit. I lost my train of thought there for a second. Okay, so production. That's what I wanted to ask you about. Um, so you got into producing when? Cause we kind of went all this way with the rapping side of stuff, but we yeah. I mean, you kind of mentioned I got multiple my times. In, uh, 2000. 2000 i got my triton and that was my core triton was my baby what's that a triton created a lot of, huh so it's a big keyboard it's a music station and you make beats and sample melodies and do all kinds of stuff on it but it's like a big keyboard that does like basically everything like it, it's like the, right. it's like the my space was my spaceship you know okay so you got that and you start so you're not coming at it from like the software like i got in fl studios it was more like the hardware version of production so you're like sampling oh yeah See, at that time your your item your component was the most important thing like you either had a triton you had an mpc or you had an sb12 you know what i'm saying those were the common mm. i mean then you could create on those but you did need some kind of thing to to pass it through but at that time it was more or less you had like a 24 track board or you had a, an a track you had something that can record that many tracks, like a digital recorder. And then software's got more popular, like if you were in like bigger studios, like everybody didn't have, you know, you know, the the, the main softwares at that time, you know, like people recorded right on there. My, their my ears, entire you know. adult life is people cracking Fruity Loops. My entire adult yeah. life is cracking Oh Fruity man, Loops. Fruity Loops got real big, yep. But like yep. The, the, the machine side of it, I mean, I, I at this point, I get what it is, especially when you brought up the other brands. I'm like, okay, it's one of them things. So you would like you walk us through how you would make a beat. Oh, man. Um, sometimes it would be based off the sample or the melody, and then I would base it off of that, or sometimes I would create. So where would you get like I a sample from? Oh, man, I'm a crate digger. I love uh, old vinyl. My favorite era is 65 to 75. Man, and I look for I look for the illest B sides I can find. I, and a lot of the weird thing is I go for album covers, man. I can always tell by like an awkward looking album cover or like one of those real artsy fartsy album covers back then. I would know that the I would be able to get a few gems off of the off of these albums. And it, it wouldn't just be your typical or Quinn and Fire hip hop samples. They would be ones that would be on some offbeat different world. And then I would just incorporate them with my wild beats and create my own madness you know what i'm saying so you would look for the non-standard album covers so like you learn how to read almost the Basically, top ones, like the ones that didn't. to get the right. other one so yeah, i wonder how many people would like learn that skill right like especially because you know crate digging is like one of those things that for production where you're doing that it's a different thing than like you know music collecting you know um yo dude yeah, are your are your beats available um, you know, I've produced people, but I've never made any actual, I did something that I put out on, um, one of those mixtape, uh, apps and, you know, it was like a, it was an instrumental CD, but I never, you know, actually put out an instrumental album. I just would produce different things on people's different projects and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Fair. Um, yeah. Cause now people be wildly wanting to hear your samples in the chat. When I say wildly, I mean immortal saying it one time, but you know, it's more fun to exaggerate the chat. It's all good, man. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, so yeah, you, you'd be like learning to read the album covers so that you don't waste your money copping some generic shit that other people are going to be finding. So you're looking for stuff. That's nah, it's thrift shops, man. Thrift shops. I would find my best vinyl in thrift shops man, all the time, bro. I live. That's what you live in the thrift shops for, man. And go for the stuff that that's where a lot of people throw away their their gems you know what i'm saying mm. you find them on the shelf in thrift shops man it'd be like a dollar a piece 
I said there's no loss. It's just getting yourself a new vinyl. And either way, you get to Hell consume yeah. it. And then yep. you sit there, listen to that shit. And what kind of uh, thing would you look for in a song to sample? That part's like, that part is the part that I go like, yo, how do you hear the thing and then flip it? Like, that's the part that is weird for me as a non-sample flipping guy. Yeah. I, I, you know, for me, I, I, I'll always like to add my vocals and everything to track. So I always like looking for melodies. I like little melodies, um, you know, and that's why I look for a lot of obscure stuff. So, cause, so the melody won't be so obvious to the year you know people will be like oh i know that one that's from al green or that one's from stephanie mills or you know what i'm saying i try to i try to go for something that nobody's gonna yeah. be able to pick that quick you know what I'm so yeah people be wanting to hear where and now it's like three people <laughs> so i want to know <laughs> what is there a song out that uh, i could like link to folk that they could hear hmm that's a good question you know what i would definitely own you on that one and, and send it to you i'll send i'll send it i could send it to you you know what i'm saying i'll have to look through my you know i can go grab them right now <laughs> go for it you know what i'm saying so we live people want to hear that's it that's a good question man if you've got uh -huh. if you can do that in like a couple of minutes go for it <laughs> all right let's see let's see what we got I mean, we went over here and got yo, he doesn't have it. So, yo, Spectres, he's going to go get some shit and s play it kind of thing. <laughs> oh, no, I don't know if I'm going to play it, but I'll show you some stuff. <laughs> Fair enough. He'll show us stuff. That's stuff. the best he's got. That's what we're getting out of it. <laughs> oh, you actually... Uh... Yo, people want to hear your stuff, man. Oh, you mean like... Like your beat. I produced it, yeah. stuff that I've sampled. I thought you were talking about stuff that I've sampled, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, stuff. I mean, not stuff that you sample. I apologize. I meant it, but that's still cool that you went. Oh, see, that's what I was. Going bro, you just fucking got vinyl, rhinos like that. Like that was actually that's that's dope that you did that. Everything about that was a great fucking <laughs> moment. But we did mean like stuff you produced. Oh yeah, absolutely. So um, for the witchcraft uh, Danny Green album, I pro I produced a lot of songs on that album.